we are going to go over the options risk analyzer tool using crypto sheets uh, for GVOL data. So to get started, if you haven't checked out our previous video uh, regarding the installation of crypto sheets in Microsoft Excel, which is an add-in, uh, please make sure to check out that video prior to reviewing this video. But if you're already familiar with crypto sheets and have used some of their API and uh, data pooling before, uh, then feel free to use it just like this video. So first things first, uh, assuming we already have the crypto sheets added and installed, we can click on crypto sheets in the ribbon at the top of a brand new workbook. So I'm going to click on crypto sheets right here. And the first thing you want to select, the first thing that we're going to want to select is the dashboard. So the dashboard is the main powerhouse for crypto. Essentially you have all of your, you can pull in all of your data in your uh, Excel sheet from the dashboard and it just floats on the side of your screen and now allowing you to get access to tons of data. But the one thing that we care about uh, for this video is the options risk analyzer. And to find the options risk analyzer tool or template, we're gonna jump over to this browse menu right here. And on the right of the browse menu, there's a little drop down that says templates. So we're gonna click that as well. So templates essentially are a way for you to click on uh, basically pre-built uh, endpoints and data pooling, where in the back end we already produced a lot of the work and efforts to plot things uh, nicely for you. And for instance, if I were to click on the GVOL Light Risk Analyzer right here, um, when I run this template, it's essentially going to open a new spreadsheet on my screen. So like right now this is book nine, then it would be book 10 if there's a new spreadsheet and so forth. Um, and on top of that, it allows me to play around with different tools using GVOL's uh, API and primarily the options, uh, I believe it's the options light uh, endpoint. Um, and that's all accessible through GVOL. So, uh, to get started, I would click on open new workbook, but I'm not going to click on this right here since I already have one opened uh, on a, another window. So I'll use that instead just to save some computer usage. Um, but basically, you click on this open new workbook, this green button right here. And assuming you're signed in and everything and have access to um, get, getting to the sheet in the first place and pulling all the data, and assuming you're a GVOL API Lite customer, this should be very easy flowing. And essentially, it would just pull up a brand new sheet on top of the uh, the worksheet that you're already working on, and you can just work from there. So let me dive over into the other workbook that we have opened, and boom. So this is essentially what it what would pull up exactly when you click on that open new workbook function with inside crypto sheets. Now, as you can see here, there's a variety of different sets of data, a bunch of uh, little menu options and drop downs, and a whole bunch of good stuff. Um, to review this in more detail, I'm going to take you guys through uh, the main functions and uses of the Options Risk Analyzer uh, um, uh, across all the different worksheets and how to get access to the data in the back end and uh, how to go through troubleshooting issues if you have any. Um, so first things first, uh, this main sheet is essentially pulling um, live options data from a selected exchange where you can select right here. In this case, I have Darebit selected, and of course all this data is crypto, uh, and you can choose from a variety of different currencies such as Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Solana. Now, on top of that too, since I'm pulling live options data, remember it's options, this data has an expiration date. So I'm gonna have to select uh, the expiration date for the uh, given call and put options on my main spreadsheet. So uh, to get started, I'll go through the process of selecting um, all these inputs. And there's also a legend right here to, to tell you uh, what's going on on the front end and the back end. So anything that's highlighted in orange is essentially uh, an input. So that's data that you're going to be selecting either through a drop down or manual entry basis. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> now, uh, to begin this process, the first thing that we're going to want to do is refresh the data. Since we want to get the latest quotes from our data, uh, we want to press this little refresh drop down right here to give us the most updated uh, values and quotes for our options. So uh, there's two options here. I can press refresh or I can press refresh again. Either or each one works, but once you already have refresh selected, you're going to want to change that to refresh again 
So it automatically updates the formula in the back end instead of keeping the same formula. So I'm going to press refresh again real quick. And as you can see, the data is busy. You can give it a few seconds and boom, it pulls the brand new data. <coughs> Excuse me again. Now, once it pulls this data, you have access to see the Bitcoin uh, call options and Bitcoin put options. But let's say I want to look at a different currency or a different exchange or something of that nature. So I have the option to select the time zone, the exchange, the currency, and the expiration for the main sheet that I'm viewing. Anything that says main exchange, main currency, or main expiration is all going to be on this main sheet, which means if I change the shadow expiration or shadow currency or shadow exchange, none of that will be visible on this sheet. Rather, all of that will be visible on this shadow book right over here. But nothing can be entered on the shadow book page. Everything must be entered on the main sheet. Now, let's say I wanted to look at Ethereum uh, on the main exchange for 6-30-2023. I can click on this little dropdown right here, click Ethereum, and just like that, it pulls all the Ethereum data while updating the strikes and the Greeks for Ethereum with all the live quotes updated on my last refresh. Pretty sweet, right? Now, in addition to that, I can also change the expiration as well. So I'm currently looking at 6-30-2023. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> just getting a little over a little bit of cold. <clears throat> Um, so I can also choose the expiration too. So let's say I want to look at 8-1-2022. I can click on that right there and it pulls all the quotes and strikes for 8-1-2022 on the main expiration. So as you can see, all the strikes updated uh, and all the different quotes and last poll data updated too. So you can play around with this, choose your ideal expiry, and this will be the main beginning process to work your way through this live option risk analyzer data. So uh, I'm going to leave that, that main expiration as is for now, just for the point of simplicity. Um, actually, you know what? I'm going to change it back to where it is, and I'll, I'll explain why in just a second. So I'm going to change it back to 331.23, or maybe it's 6-something six, six 2023. It doesn't really matter. I'm just All I want to do right now is make sure that these two values are close, and I'll have a reason for that in just a minute. And I'm also going to change this value back to Bitcoin. So one of the main functions of the main sheet besides uh, pulling up live options data, is that all this data on the main sheet spits over into um, the shadow book, plots, risk analyzer, and a bunch of other functions that I have yet to show you. So regarding these functions, the first thing I'm gonna review real quick is the shadow book. So the shadow book, essentially, <clears throat> any selections you make on the shadow expiration, currency, or exchange uh, will pull through the shadow book, and it's essentially just another book that you can look at um, uh, regarding whatever options data you wish to view. But the best part of it is um, it's the shadow book and the main sheet when combined together can be used as great comparisons on the plot sheet. Now the plot sheet is, let me pull it up real quick. The plot sheet is a plotted, uh, are a bunch of plots of, of varieties of different Greeks versus strikes on different expirations. So let's say um, well, currently I'm looking at the 331.23 zero bit Bitcoin uh, uh, options chain against the 1230.2022 zero bit Bitcoin options chain, and I'm pulling the strike versus the implied volatility data between those two, so I can see the curves and see how they uh, change against each other, and I can compare this up to two uh, with up to two different expirations along with uh, term structure, uh, strike gamma, strike theta and a bunch of other Greeks as well. Um, so that's pretty much the main uh, function of the plots page. So let's say, for instance, I wanted to um, look at uh, 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 1230s Deribit Bitcoin um, implied volatility against the 331.23 implied volatility. I have the option to basically view how those change over periods of time, and I can log that on my own time or do whatever I want with it. And it's just a great visualizer to have uh, as a spare tool to see how the options market is pricing uh, different Greeks in, uh, in, in their pricings. <clears throat> now, um, another main function of this, at the bottom, you may, you may notice that it says percent, OT, uh, percent out of the money versus gamma and percent out of the money versus delta and other Greeks as well. Um, to make this more useful and comparable, one thing that I like to do 
is, uh, let's say you wanted to compare uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum together for the same expiration, right? So let's let's say I will change this to Ethereum. It's going to update the quotes in the back end, so that that'll be on the shadow book. And let's say I wanted to uh, choose the same expiration. So let's do three thirty one as well. So let's scroll down until I see three thirty one and then click that. So now when I go back over to the plots page. Um, if I scroll up, see how everything looks kind of uh, funky, um, considering that the strike of Ethereum or the at the money value, whatever the spot price is, it's much lower than the spot price of Bitcoin. And obviously, there's a reason, reason to that. They're two different uh, currencies uh, entirely. So they're kind of very hard to compare uh, on a, a dollar basis. Hence the reason why at the bottom, we have a percent out of the money basis to compare different values uh, for different currencies. So as you can see here, it's comparing Bitcoin versus Ethereum. So in this case, I could compare the implied volatilities between two different currencies on the same exchange for potential arbitrage opportunities or something else I might find uh, regarding that data uh, specifically. And the reason I mention arbitrage is, uh, let's say, uh, I don't know the correlation between Ethereum and Bitcoin on top of my head, but let's say those two assets are fairly correlated and I would assume they have uh, some strong degrees of correlation with one another. Um, I could use uh, implied volatility to uh, either sell or buy against each currency um, to profit off of. But that's just an idea of how you could use that. And of course, there's other Greeks and other metrics that you can analyze as well. So I'm going to dive back to that main sheet, right? So when I go back to the main sheet, I'm going to switch these back to the values I previously had before. Um, so I'll keep this shadow expiration the same for this next part. Um, but I'm going to change the currency or the shadow currency to Bitcoin. So we have both the main currency and the shadow currency matching each other on the same exchange. Now, one of the really cool features of this risk analyzer that we developed is uh, quite literally an options profit calculator or risk analyzer. I can go over different uh, options contracts that I can manually select and view the plotted outcomes of those options contracts as a singular or combined position. And now, in addition to these basic functions of entering the limit price for both uh, the entries on one of the legs and the second leg, uh, I could also select what day I'd like to see the price of that option um, in the future. Also, with change in implied volatility assumptions that I can select right on here. So let's say for instance, I wanted to look at the Bitcoin 331, 23, 23,000 strike. I could select that as a long call in this drop down menu, like so. And then I could update this bid and ask to the latest quote. So let's just do the mid for simplicity reasons. So I'm going to do 6435.60, enter. And as you see, there's a little bit of adjustment on the uh, the plots, as you might notice this uh, black line right here called the break even or entry entry price will uh, increase. Um, in addition to that, I'm going to adjust my uh, put position. <clears throat> so we're again looking at the twenty five thousand strike for the three thirty one twenty three uh, twenty three expiration, and this will be a long put. So we're going to select those values. Uh, in here, but they're already selected, so I'm just going to let them be. And on top of that, I'm going to adjust the market mid price to be my entry price, like so. And as you notice, that black line just decreased a little bit as well. Um, and then it also tells you the trade type, uh, whether it's a credit or a debit, uh, based on the latest market quotes for your entry price. Uh, and this will get, give you a good idea of what trades you are going to enter and what the potential payout of those trades will be at some point in the future. And of course, I can always change um, these assumptions at the top of the page over here. So for instance, let's say I wanted to assume there was going to be a 10% change in implied volatility. If you notice, notice these curves on the right, just keep an eye on them. When I select this 10% right now, you can see how they kind of adjusted and, uh, and shifted a little bit more uh, than they were before at the 0% change in implied volatility. And to mention the shadow prices right here, I need to update these because these aren't up to date. Uh, I'll select a couple of random values. 
<clears throat> Let's just do these. So these will show you what the price of that option will be on these given dates in the future. And notice how these option prices are higher uh, uh, for 2-9 and 1-6 prior to expiration, um, given that uh, over the duration of holding the options contract uh, in a long position, especially these options will lose value. So uh, it would make sense that these options will have uh, higher um, extrinsic value upon approaching expiration versus on the day of expiration, was it, which is plotted as that thick purple line right here. Um, so whenever you select any of the uh, the price on day or or shadow um, options at the top of your universal settings uh, up here, th that that will affect this bottom left plot. And then we'll later add a feature where we can add it to this plot too, and then with the combined positions as well. Um, but this should give you a little bit of a teaser of how option prices move over periods of time uh, in regards to intrinsic and extrinsic value. We also have other pages such as the help page that goes over a lot of the questions you guys may have um, regarding the accessibility uh, and the functions of the template. So the help page will be the main um, uh, go-to in regards to any questions on these main four blue sheets. Um, and you can take a look through that on your own time to get a layout of what to expect and what potential bugs might be in the sheet that are still a work in progress to make your experience better. Uh, and of course, I also have my email and Twitter tagged down below if you need to get in direct contact, contact with me regarding any uh, pot potential ideas, construction, or major issues that I should be aware of on the sheet if there are any. Um, and you might have noticed at the bottom of the screen there are a bunch of extra worksheets that are highlighted in gray. Uh, all of these gray worksheets are all the back end functions that are calculating all the data displayed on each of these four main sheets right here. So for instance, if I wanted to click on the main raw option data, all of this is the option data uh, pulled from the main sheet uh, in that first in these first boxes right here from main exchange, main currency, main expiration, and all these other uh, inputs right up here as well. So all of that is expressed in the main raw options data and you can play around with this how you like, uh, derive these values onto different spreadsheets or whatever you think might help you out in your options analysis. But of course, all these values are raw and pretty hard to um, understand unless you have uh, these other templates uh, or, or worksheets I developed off of the template um, to make your life just a little bit easier. So we have both the raw, main raw option data and the shadow raw option data as well. Not to mention in the background, we also have um, a variety of different calculations for both the plots uh, and the Black-Scholes formulas as well. So if I were to run through here, you'll see uh, plenty of columns with tons of data uh, telling you how we calculate our Greeks and other variables using uh, the Black-Scholes model. So if you were to, let's say, click on theta, for instance, you can see that juicy formula, which tells you all the info you need on how to calculate theta in regards to other variables and Black-Scholes assumptions. And if there, were to if there were to be any issues or anything else you guys would want to add onto the spreadsheet uh, on, uh, on the template, you can, you can swipe over all the way to the right and add uh, more columns uh, of your own data and calculations on top of all these calculations to keep the sheet, to keep the sheet uh, nice and pretty. Um, same thing goes with the shadow calculations in the same boat. All the calculations are relatively the same uh, with just different selects, uh, selections of outputs. And regarding the main plot calculations uh, and shadow plot calculations, these values are computing a lot of the uh, metrics calculated in the main and shadow calculation sheet, uh, primarily using the real-time data and uh, Black-Scholes model um, to plot these uh, on the plots page. So anything you see here, all these values are most likely going to be referenced on the main plot or shadow plot calculations um, that you can uh, play around with and see on your own time. And then over here, these highlighted values are uh, the current metrics and uh, calculations for uh, the risk analyzer tool 
and these plots just right over here. But that pretty much concludes everything that's um, available uh, in the, uh, the template. And um, like I said, any questions, feel free to comment on the video. Uh, shoot me an email or a message on Twitter uh, with my tag in the, uh, in the help tab over here. Uh, and without further ado, I hope you guys all have a great rest of your day. And I will see you in the next tutorial video. Thanks.